What's up, everybody? Um, Coach Bradley here with my man. Mike Dynamite. In the building. You guys have been watching, and if you've been on our page, you've seen us do a lot of training and stuff, and uh, my man here. But today, what we're going to do is give you a little insight as to how Mike Dynamite came on board over at Master Boxing and some of the things that are happening in our sport that we want to bring, uh, just bring light upon um, where there are certain play people that take situations and fighters and put them in a situation where there's a no-win situation. Uh, Mike's going to give you an insight to his story. It's so interesting. So if you know somebody, tag them and make sure that they watch this entire video from beginning to the end because this is something that should not be done in our sport and if it's happening and you know about it anywhere. Let's, it's time to shed light on this. So Mike's going to give us insight to, like I said, what, what, how he got victimized in the sport um, that we love and know as boxing. Share the floor, man. Explain to them kind of how that thing began and you know what your aspirations were and how it all started. I realized that I, I wasn't getting what I was supposed to get. I wasn't learning what I was supposed to be learning where I was at in my training camp. That's when I reached out and met Coach Brad. It was just, it was just obvious. It was a, I met him, I, 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 my first phone call through him was actually at the sparring session. It went totally wrong. I had a bad sparring session and we went through that. I went, when I, during the sparring session, I'm coming to the corner to my coach and he didn't have the answer of what was going on out there on the floor. That was a problem, it was a commu I felt right then, immediately, it was a communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. I'm missing something, something, this, this ain't right. I mean, this happened instantly in the moment, it's fast. I'm trying to deal with it out here during the session. I come out to the corner and we ain't got the answer. Mm -hmm. It's no, it, it, that, ain't, that ain't, that that couldn't work for me. So, right then, I knew, I ain't learning. I'm, I ain't learning something. Something, I'm, something I ain't getting that these guys got that I don't got. What, what is it? Yeah. So what the beginning of this is Mike was advised not to become an amateur first. So I have a problem with that first because people think they can just become boxing because they watch ESPN, Showtime Boxing, and up until last year, HBO Boxing. And, it's just that easy, but there's a reason why people pay a lot and sponsor kids to be on in the amateur circuits, um, learning how to train guys and developing skills to become athletes in the, in, in the Golden Gloves and the Silver Gloves and the regional tournaments and the national tournaments and Olympic alternates and, and Olympians. And that's a lot of skills and a lot of tournaments to really build up the, the box, the ability to become a pure boxer. And there's so much that you gotta learn. So Mike, take them back to when you were advised. So, and take us from that part of the story. So again, I, like Coach Bradley was saying, I was advised to not go into an amateur career in box. I was told by my trainer or, what, or whatnot that he could get me ready in X amount of time for a fight. No experience, no nothing. We, we can do this, man. This is it. I'm the best. That's what they all say. <laughs> all right? mm -hmm. So, no, no, no amateur background, no nothing. I took my, I was advised to take my first fight in three months of, with just three months of training. Only three months of training, huh? No boxing experience. No at all. boxing experience at all. Never put on a pair of boxing gloves. Mm -hmm. Now that's happening. All right. During that period of time, like I said, I trained for three months. And we end up jumping in the ring with a fighter five and one from DC. <sighs> That's you can't make that up. Even if he did have an amateur career, you don't even fight someone with six fights more experience than you on your first fight. Nobody in the world does that. That makes no sense. That's just like taking a kid straight out of junior high school and prepping them for Princeton University. I don't care how smart your kid is. There's levels to education. That's why you go from kindergarten to first, from first to second. You don't skip from fourth grade to 12th because you want to. You don't like school, so you're ready to get it over. Same thing with boxing. Go ahead, continue. Me being a fighter, I believe in myself. 
So I won't discourage about his record or who am I fighting or whatever. I don't care. I'm coming to bump. So that's my mentality. I'm coming to win. I'm coming to knock you out and get, get you out of there. That was my mentality. I can beat anybody. I'm training. I'm going to do this. So I believed in the coach and I believed in what, what we had going on. I followed the process at that time. And it didn't pan out well for me at all. Mm -hmm. So what happened is Mike took that first fight. And of course, no matter, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are, uh, I mean, Mike Tyson. I mean, you just don't fight someone with that much more experience than you have first coming into the sport. So he lost the first fight. And then what happened? Lost the first fight, went back, went back to the drawing board, tried it all over again. Phone, his phone, it, it was like, it was kind of, seemed like I was kind of caught up in a hustle, I wouldn't say. That's what I would say. Yeah. It was, every time my, my coach's phone would ring or whatever for fights, after fights, after fights, he would ask, hey, hey you want to take this fight? You want to take, it was, it was more like a hustle. Hustle. Basically, this is what I'm saying. He was, it, I felt like he was in it for the money. So he was wanting to make the money off of me. Throw me in the ring with this guy, that guy. Hey, re re it, with little or none experience. Yeah, and that's kind of what you was experiencing. Let me weigh in on that. And it, what it is is no fighter should be in a position to say, I want to take a fight. The first thing that you got to have is management uh, to manage the direction of your career. Just like IBM has managers, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has managers for Facebook. Uh, all of the top companies like Apple, they have managers in every department, every department. So to not have a person that says, this is a good idea for his career moves is absolutely asinine. For the coach to come to you and say, you want this fight and you know nothing about the sport, you haven't been in the sport a hot minute yet and you definitely can't make decisions like that. So continue to take them into the next fight. Okay, so next fight, like I said, phone ringing and ringing. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, nah, it, it might be a call for a fight. I, I started off fighting at 147. He might got a call for 165. He call, hey, hey, you want to go up to 65 and fight? I'm like, damn, no, nah, you, you think that's a good idea? I, sometimes I had to use my brain and be like, nah, man, we ain't going to do that. That, that ain't going to work. So, like I said, with no management in process, no, no nothing, we went on. I end up finding one. We end up getting a nice fight that I thought was alright for my second fight. It was a, the fight of record. He was two and one. Like I said, more, more and more training. I got to get more and more comfortable with myself. I think I, I, I never, never thought I could, I could be in it. But that's my, that's my mindset. I think I can take it. So we accepted the fight. Same thing happened this time. Like I said, lack of experience in this fight, which was I didn't know how to cut off the ring, like a skill set. The fighter just ran from me the whole time. He jabbed me, just kept, kept me on the outside and ran from me the whole fight. Mm -hmm. Easy decision with Yeah. Oh, and two. So, as you can see, this is a thing that really is happening in the sport and w in which we know and love. And just so you understand, you can go down on our timeline right now on Master Boxing Page and you can see the hundreds of thousands, thousands of videos that have been uploaded and you don't see a bunch of replica skills and drills. It takes a lot of knowledge. How to cut off the ring, how to fight off your front foot, how to fight off your back foot, how to posture as you get more experience after you learn the basics. How do you use things like the Philly Shell postures, the peekaboo postures. Those are just postures, just not styles. As you go up layers, you got to go up and understand the levels of the game of being educated to be a fighter. And you are not fighting in a backyard, my friend. You are fighting in a professional sport, combat sport, the number one gladiator sport. You cannot just come in here and act like this don't matter. <laughs> this has to be there. And the coach is the one that possesses that knowledge. So on fight nights and in training camp, you can make adjustments. And that's why we tell you guys and show you the demonstrations. You don't have to agree with what I do, but understand there's a process in doing even what you do as a coach, a trainer, no matter if you're managing or promoting, 
There's a process. And no matter what you think about what we do or how we do it, we are following a process. And our process makes champions. We will make it because we're not throwing and making guys believe they can do something they're not ready to do. You got to pass the test, the eye test, and what you are willing to do to sacrifice him. Mike is now sitting at 0-2, and, and now we're prepping him for his real career. That's why we focused on saying, okay, for guys who are really uh, start late and they don't have the real luxury to become an amateur and have five, six years as an amateur, we groom you from that point. And, and as Mike has kind of explained to you, he then reached out to me and tell him from that point how that happened. I, as I reached out and got connected with Coach Bradley, he told me, he, we talked on the phone, he told me the process, how long it was gonna take. He gave me his, his blueprint of my career and what he was gonna do. And he stuck to it to a T. And right now, we're here to this day, speaking to you now, live. And the first step was to make sure that people understand that things like this are going on. Don't be a victim of that. And if you are around people that are trying to push push you, remember, it's a business. It's not backyard. You're not fighting in the schoolyard. This is boxing. This is a sport. It's the NFL. It's the NLB. It is NHL. It is professional golf. You are about to play against Tiger Woods. This is a professional sport. Don't get it twisted. There are a lot of brains that go behind operations. There's a lot of layers that go behind the operation. The ring is just one part of it. So we wanted to make sure that you guys got to understand how and what's going on in this sport behind the scenes that nobody shed light on. And being that he was a good guy and I liked how he carried himself, I decided to jump in and help him out. And that's where we are, and we will be fighting within the next eight weeks. We're looking forward to it. You guys, make sure you stay locked in to how we unfold and unravel the process. And this is the beginning of an amazing docu-series that you guys will get to witness first half. If you are out there and you're in that same situation, go over there to the, click the link and go into the Master Boxing Skills Training Group. Understand how many layers go into just the sport itself and the teachings. And don't try to jump out there because you'll have people out there who try to throw you in there. They're gonna get a little piece of money. They playing checkers with it. Everybody's not grooming fighters, and that's what we're focusing on. So I thank you for doing that. That was real, and I'm um, looking forward to taking it to the next level. Until next time, let us know where you're at, uh, what part of the world you're from, what part of the country you're from, um, and we'll continue to give you that consistent funk. So this is Coach Bradley signing out with it's Mike Dynamite in the building, and this is Master Boxing, where you get your master's degree boxing. Peace, and be blessed at Godspeed.